So yeah, my name is Jason Payne, owner of State 48 Roofing. So I want to start with something that's bugging the crap out of me, and I think you know him, and I need to meet him. When you guys walked up this morning, right? I know a handful of you guys. Good morning. How are you? Um, you guys walked up. You guys saw all those little mini Sprinter van thingies with ladders on them, right? There's about a dozen of them. Who saw them? Yes? Everybody raise your hand. Yep, yep. We're going to engage. So I need yes, no, communicate. Yes. Yes? Okay. What does that guy do? No, you don't know. He's one of your clients. It's cheating. If you don't know, before, unless he works for, he's, he's in another room, right? Host, or hosting that meeting, right? What does he do? He, he, he does nothing because there's nothing on his van. Something to do with the ladder. Mm -hmm. High five. Is that your business? Do they know what you do? Do people know what you do? How many of you guys know who I was before you met Matt? If I say the word State 48 Roofing, raise your hand if you know who that is or what that is. But you've never met me personally. Maybe you have. Some of you have. Okay? It's all about branding. Okay? Right now. Anybody, just do a self-check. This is going to be very, very, it's only 30 minutes, so it's got to be quick. Very vulnerable. Check your ego. I want you to take your ego, open that glass door, throw it out there, come in here and be ready to learn. Open up and be willing to grow. Okay? I own State 48 Roofing. I started it from scratch. No help. Me, my now COO, Dory, and a two, uh, a husband and wife, Guatemalan couple. And that was it. August 1st, 2019, zero revenue, no partnerships, no funding, no nothing. We are, we just did $1.25 million last month in November. We're going to do 12 million this year. I've done over 33 million in four years. Okay. Oh, you're bragging. Cool. Maybe I am. It doesn't freaking matter. It's not the point. The point is, is that it's doable and it's possible. But what you have to do is you have to be your brand. You guys know Sean Whalen, Lions Not Sheep? I'm buddies with him. And he always, every time I talk to him, he's like, be your brand. Be your brand. So my question is, if you stand up right now, what do you do? What do you, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Right? What do you, what, anybody, you, I can know what you do. You, you, and you. So about a quarter of the room. The number one reason why small business owners go out of business is obscurity. People don't know who you are. They might love you. You might be amazing at what you do, right? The mitten and press dude and all that, or the sandblasting and all that crap. That's great. But do people know who you are, especially in your local community, right? And the number one way to do that, in my opinion, is be your brand, right? Have you guys ever seen my trucks? Yep. I have 13 trucks. You come sell for me. They're W-2 employees, but they bring in their own trucks because they don't want to drive my cute little GMC Canyons. They want the big old bad trucks. So they, bring, they buy their own trucks. I make them wrap their vehicle in order to work for me, or you cannot do it. Plain and simple. You will, ne you will never post a picture or a video on a roof without my, either my hat or my shirt or my hoodie on a roof, or you're fired. It's a non-negotiable. My crews, if I ever find my crews wearing something else other than State 48 roofing, ironically, they just wear, they work for other roofing companies, so they'll throw one on, right? It's like you flip it inside out, and you can wear it. But you'll never wear, like, Adidas doesn't come me a check. FUBU doesn't come me a check. Louis Vuitton doesn't come me a check. Carhartt doesn't come me a check. Though I will not represent those guys because they did not come me a check. My question is, are you, are you doing that for your own brand as the leader? All business owners in here? Yes? Okay, cool. Um, so that's my intro. I scare you? Yeah. A little intimidating? Okay, good. <laughs> or you're going to love it, okay? So, scale. Oh, where did Mark go? I'll leave Matt's stuff up here because I freaking love marketing. I'm going to just compliment Matt, okay? So I took out the L. And I put the letter eight. And the reason why is because I believe in this thing called PPFs. Write this down. So we did scale and we did eight. What's significant of the number eight? Infinity. Infinity. Some reason, one reason why I did it. Because when you scale, do you scale for a time or for a season or are you scaling? I am huge, 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 huge on personal, or the PPFs, personal, professional, and financial goals. I learned this from Natalie and Brandon Dawson, but I teach it myself because it is so powerful. And I have 87 employees that train on a daily basis with me. And I have unrecruitable employees. Question is, do you? And if you don't have unrecruitable employees, how do you develop them? How do you hire them? How do you retain them? Is it, oh, this guy, we're paying him $20 an hour, but he'll leave for 22? You, he's, he's there for the paycheck. He's not there for, what does your culture look like? Do you have core values? Do you have a mission statement? Do you have a vision statement? If not, guess what? You have two weeks before the end of the year, work on that.
shut down your business and literally only do that. Don't do anything else for the next two weeks, three weeks. And January 1st, your entire business will double or triple in the same year. Plain and simple. If they don't know you, they can't flow you. Grant Cardone teaches that, right? But with your employees, they, it's called caught, not taught. Write that down. Caught, not taught. Are they watching you work out? I love Matt. Works out. All, I, I love that he works out. He walks in the room. He has natural respect because of how he looks. This John Wise guy. Oh, he's golfing in Africa. Cool. See him? It's embarrassing. He's, he's not reaching his true potential or becoming the best version of himself. He's not. I am massive on health and fitness. But if you are not in optimal shape and not trying to be in optimal shape, why do you think your employee should be? Set the expectation. If you're not wearing your brand, why should your employees be wearing your brand? Right? Are they there for a check or are they there because they want to become an entrepreneur? Right? They want to set up shop inside your business. They want to call it home. They don't want to be a business owner. I have a $100,000 a week payroll every Friday. $102,000 this morning came out of a bank account, out of one of mine. Some people just don't want that risk, right? And they don't want to grow and they don't want to scale. Cool, right? The thing I don't like about people that have like, oh, I have all these businesses, but are they growing and are they scaling or are you maintaining? Because last time I checked, this is debt. True story. I have a, my uncle, I worked for my uncle for nine years, Okay in a, roof, a local roofing company, I'm not gonna say what it is, you can do the math, but I worked with him and he's done the same amount of revenue for about 35 years. And his company is about worth less, about 25% of mine in four years. So the whole reason for scale is because you're always growing, you're always developing yourself, your employees, right? Personally, professionally, and financially, okay? These are called PPF audits. You need to be doing these on a quarterly basis. This will change your business in order to scale and grow and hire more people, okay? Plain and simple. The best way to do it is you're gonna have a quarterly interview with every single one of your employees, okay? And you're gonna write down three of these. So three personal, three professional, and three financial goals. Have you guys ever heard this before, by the way? Anybody? PPFs? So you guys need to follow Natalie and Brendan Dawson. They own Cardone Ventures. They're business partners with Grant Cardone. Okay, they actually live here in Paradise Valley. Amazing people. So they teach this, and I teach this too on a smaller level, right? Yes. Sorry, what was your name? Uh, Natalie and Brandon Dawson, D A W S O N. They're all over the internet. <clears throat> Have a jet. They're doing pretty well. Like, oh, you've done twelve million in four years. They've done one hundred and fifty million in four years. We started about the same time. <laughs> so I got I got work to do, right? So that or one hundred fifty million. Sorry, but still, so. The reason why I don't like this, for example, my, my uncle's company started like this, 1980 something, right? 2023, it's worth about half a million bucks. I started mine in 2019 to 2023. I just got a cash offer three months ago for $2 million. Clearly I'm not gonna take it. That's stupid, okay? This is an older room to each their own. I'm telling you what works for me. Right? Think I'm full of crap? Not a problem. I hate Dave Ramsey. I think what he teaches is absolute bullshit. For business owners trying to scale and grow their business. Now, if you have stupid and unnecessary debt, different conversation, right? But for business owners, okay, he says, cash is king. Well, if I get a payout for $2 million, what, what's my paycheck the next Friday? Zero. So guess what? This immediately, immediately drops. And if you have a one hundred dollars to $500,000 normal standard of living, right? You're gonna be bankrupt and out of business in three years, four years, five years, gone. Or it can be cash flowing for me and make anywhere from 300 to $700,000 a year, right? For the rest of my life, I don't have to touch it. You guys see that? So what's, is cash here or cash flow? Cash flow, okay? Pay attention, pay attention to that, okay? Cash flow is everything. When you don't have cash, you run out of cash, everything stops like a train, just like stops very, very, very hard. Okay, so going back to this, PPS, personal, professional, financial goals, every single one of your employees, three personal goals. What are you working on? Do you want to lose weight, right? Do you want a better relationship with your wife? Do you want to uh, maybe get the forever home, right? Or build a custom home or get stop renting and buy a house. 12% interest rates, it's great right now, right? Okay. 
But what happens is you, like, pardon my French, I get, I get excited, I cuss, I get excited. You literally have to give a fuck about your employees, guys. Plain and simple. It's, it's literally that easy. If you actually truly care about them and see them as an asset and not a liability, they will stay with you forever, they will love you forever, and they will fall on the sword for you. But if all it is is a nine to five and here's your $20 an hour, $12 an hour, you know, here's your commission check, whatever it is, and they leave, there's no loyalty there. They'll leave in two seconds. You guys have all done this. There's a lot, there's a lot of experience in this room, a lot of experience. I'm probably one of the younger dudes in this room, okay? But the point of it being is that we've all learned it the wrong way. This is not a nine to five. This is, you want to create it as a career, right? You want to be, have them become an entrepreneur. You want them to love wearing your brand. How many of your employees love putting their, their State 48 shirt on their, their garage door, or their whatever agency? How many of them love putting it on? They put it on with pride. They have a, conversa a controversial conversation. Love it, right? They have a controversial conversation with another roofing contractor, one of my dispatchers, one of the girls who literally lives in Gold Canyon, works remotely, lives in Gold Canyon. Had a conversation at a dance studio. Her daughter, her daughter does dance. And she had one of somebody else come in and say, oh, uh, you know, a, a dance dad comes in like, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, uh, I work at this roofing company. And she's like, huh, hold my beer. She just sits there and waits and waits. And he's just doing his little blah, 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 blah. Right? And there's like going around the circle like, hey, what do you do? What do you do? She's like, I work for State 48 Roofing, and the dude goes white. I mean, just pale white. And he's like, yep, I know who you guys are. And his entire demeanor, he was all like, you know, he's like, I work for this roofing company. Uh, and then she literally said, I work for State 48 Roofing. You know who I am. You know what we do. And she just sat there. She didn't say anything else. And the dude literally just like crawled in a hole like this afterwards. On her own, at a dance studio. This literally happened like three days ago, okay? I know I helped her go to Disneyland for the first time in her life with her daughter, her three-year-old daughter, four-year-old daughter. Last year, why? I said, hey, what's your goal? What do you want to do? What's your personal goal? Where do you want to go? I've always wanted to go to Disneyland. And we want to go during Halloween because all the Halloween theme. Cool. How much is it going to cost? This much. Okay, well, let us set up something to incentivize you to go to that. We have to understand as business owners that what makes us tick doesn't make our employees tick, Right? Very stereotypical, guys love sex more than girls love sex. It's just a thing, it's okay, right? That gets me way more excited. My wife says, hey, come here. I'm like, ha, ah, let's do it. And she's like, hey, I want you to like rub my feet and tell me I'm pretty and watch a freaking chick flick with me, right? I'm like, I would never want, don't touch my feet, I'm good. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm out, right? Question is, what makes your employees tick? Write that down. What makes your employees tick? What gets them excited? What gets them jacked up? You will. Your jaw will freaking drop when you ask them. First thing's gonna happen, they're gonna say, I don't know. You're gonna hear the word, I don't know a thousand times once you do this, because no business owners give two shits about their employees and ask these questions. None of them. This is why we're changing the small business owner game, the blue, especially the blue collar game. That's what I'm here to do. That's what scale is. We coach small business owners and we take them from doing a half, who's doing over, who's doing over $5 million in revenue? Raise your hand. Two of you, awesome. Over 10? Love, both over 10, my man, we're gonna talk afterwards, okay? So what we do is I've helped about 25 small business owners locally go from a half a million or three quarters of a million or a million dollars in revenue to four to seven to 10 million plus. And from them just working in their garage, right? Them and a couple guys or them and their wife's doing the books and doing the appointments and they're working 18 hours and they're all, you know, they're dead tired and they're exhausted and they're, they're overworked and it's exhausting, right? I love how Matt started it out. Can you take your phone? This came from Tommy Mello, and I love it. I steal it all the time. He's been on my podcast. He's been on my stages. And he said, can you take your phone and turn it off? Leave your iPad, leave your laptop, leave everything, and go, to, go golfing from a helicopter in South Africa, right, for 30 days and not touch your business. First of all, you should never do that, my opinion. But can you? Who answers the phone? Write this down. We call, I call it the Britney effect. I have permission to tell a story because she's in my coaching program, and this is true, 100% true story. How much time do I got? Uh, 12 minutes. minutes, beautiful. <clears throat> okay, it's called the Brittany effect. You'll never forget this once I tell you this. Okay, true story. About a year ago, her, we call her Brittany the Painter. She's, she owns a painting company. Her, her dad passed away during COVID, and she had to take over as, as, the, as the painter, as the, her and her mom. And so they run this painting company, like two crews, 
And it was her and her mom. And they're like, cool, we'll figure it out. Her dad has owned the painting company for 30 years. Okay. And I did, I, I do personal audits. I do bi- personal, but also business audits, right? I figure out where the holes are in your ship and we rebuild it and figure out, you know, what your biggest key points and pain points are. And we're going to go into that. We're going to finish up with 2024 of like what your pain points are in 2023. Don't let them be pain points in December of 2024, right? Make changes, move, improve. So the Brittany effect, she says, I said, okay, you do great. Who does your marketing? She says, me. Okay. Right down, Brittany. Okay, so you do social media, you do ads, you do the stroll game, right? You're in magazines. You do all that, and it generates what? Leads. Makes the phone ring, right? Or you get an an opt-in. Who takes that phone call? Hey, I need a roof. If you ever call call any number, you'll never get me, ever. You will not get that cell phone. You won't. And I said, when, when, when someone calls to paint your house, who answers? Oh, she said, well, it's, it's me. It's my cell phone. Okay. Right, right down, Brittany. And this is a big, huge whiteboard. So her name's up here like four times already. Cool. So after you do the appointment, what's the next? In, in a normal blue collar sales game, what's next? Someone goes out to the house to do the plumbing or do the electrical or do the roof or do the solar or do the whatever, right? So you have a sales rep or a technician go out there. And I said, well, who goes and does the sale? Me. Okay. Right down, Brittany. You guys see where we're going here? Okay, so from there, she gets a deal. Awesome, sign contract, deposit, beautiful. Well, we need to schedule the crew, right? So we're going to production, fulfillment now. Production, who's doing that? Oh, well, I, I, I do. I set it up with, tell me your name? Matt. Matt. Hey, Matt, uh, can we come, uh, we'll come December 22nd, get it done before Christmas, not a problem, is that okay? December 22nd, cool, work, okay. So here's the email, here's the sign, here, 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 boom, 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 let's go. Oh, who does that? Oh, I do, okay, Brittany. Okay. Oh, by the way, you have to order the paint and order the tape and order the plastic and, and roofing. We have seven dump trailers. Order the dump trailer. I right? get that, get that rolling, get that dispatched. Who does that? Brittany. Brittany. Okay. Right. Quality control. We start the job. They do a great job painting it. We, oh, wait, I have a question. We got a change order. I don't want this wall. I want that wall. Who, who calls for the change order? Who calls for the quality control? Brittany. Brittany. Okay. Oh, who does the work? Who does, who does the, actual, the actual painting? Who does all that stuff? Oh, I have a guy, you know, Matt, Mark, Luke, John, you know, whatever it is, right? I, I, have these, I have these two crews or these six guys or whatever, right? Okay, cool. So she doesn't actually do the painting. She subs it out. She has it in-house, W-2, 1099, irrelevant. Not Brittany. <laughs> right? <laughs> We're getting somewhere. We're making progress. Okay, cool. We're done. We'll go collect the final check, send them the invoice. They pay, well, who does invoicing? Is it automated? Someone has to click a button to say, hey, we're done, now bill them, right? Who clicks it? Freaking good old Brittany. Okay. Follow up, right? How was our experience? Can you leave us a five star Google review? Whether it's automated or in person, face to face, phone call, whatever. What does that look like? Who does that? Last but not least, my Brittany. So out of 12 steps, 20 steps, two steps, whatever your step, your process is. Did you hear Matt before? He's in my business and he named off like seven gals. Papa, Heather, Brittany, Lindsay, Megan. Brrr. He never said Matt. You see that? So what happens when Brittany goes out of town? What happens when Brittany gets sick? What happens when Brittany's tired? What happens when Brittany wants to take a nap? stops. That is not a business. That is a high paid employee. And it's an exhausting, exhausting way of life. That's a blue collar dream, baby. My dad's been doing flooring for 39 years. Still does that. His name is Vaughn. So take out Brittany and let's put Vaughn. And flooring. My question is, do you have the balls to come write your name up on here and put Matt or whoever? There's no way you're doing 10 million and you're all those, by the way. Right? You cannot scale a business unless you have people. Plain and simple. I'm a solopreneur. Cool. What happens when the solo goes away? I'm an influencer. Cool. The influencer gets sick. Content goes away. It's not a business. It's a great high paying job. It's not a business. Do you guys see where I'm going here? 
Don't be a Britney. That was that, that's what came to me hardest today was that. So the PPFs, do your personal, professional, financial goals. Sorry, I skipped the other two. Professional. Can write down the word, this word, capacity issues. How many have all awesome, awesome employees that want to grow, want to do more things, bigger things? And you say, oh, we haven't done that yet. We can't do it yet. Uh, we haven't developed yet. We haven't, we're, we're, we're not there yet. And they leave. They're amazing employees. But they came up with some bullshit excuse of why they left when really it was, I can't grow here. I have a size eight foot with a size eight shoe, but I want to, I want to wear a size 12 shoe because I'm only nine years old. But you're wearing a size eight shoe, you have to wear a size eight shoe for the rest of your life. What happens to your foot? Your toes literally, my grandma, 95 years old, literally her toes were like this. Because back in the day, they only had wood shoes for a time. And she literally had her toes, she couldn't buy bigger shoes, so her toes literally had to curl in. So her shoe, her feet would fit inside of her shoe. Is that maybe one of your departments or one of your employees in your business? They want to grow with you, they want to scale with you, but you don't have the balls to do it or you're scared. Write down the word fear. All caps, fear. What are you scared of? In your business, what are you scared of? It's okay. Write it down. What's something you need to do in 2024 that you didn't do in, didn't do in 2023? Okay. Um, last but not least, financial. Financial goals. Right? I talked about um, Jesse lives in Gold Canyon. True story. You can call her. Actually, if you call to, dis- to get an appointment with us, you're going to get a hold of either Jesse or Andrew. Talk to Jesse. Be like, hey, I heard Jason helped you get to go to uh, Disneyland last year. How was it? Ask her. True story. Call her right now. Call one of my five phone numbers. It's, you're going to get one or the other. If it's Andrea, she won't relate. But at Jesse, that's, that's who it is. Financial goals. What are your employees, your team members' financial goals? Is it buy a house? So my COO, Dory, she wants to buy a house in Mexico. So she can get out, get out and she can work remote too. So she wants to go to Mexico, have a house in Mexico, do her jam. Cool. What does the deposit look like? What does the monthly payment look like? What, de- describe it to me. Send me a picture. Cool. Guess what? That house is now my house. It is now my responsibility to get you in that house. You're going to do the work. I'm going to give you the tools and the, and the vision, right, and the game plan to execute that Mexico house. How many of you guys know that about your employees? What their goals are? We always say, how many of you think your employees just want to make more money? Raise your hand. 100% bullshit. 1,000% bullshit. It's called, it's called middle class, and it's called corporate America. Those dudes don't make any more money. They make the, I mean, r- relatively speaking, right? They make within about 10 to 20% for several, 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 several years. So it's not money, right? It's not. People will stay and fall on the sword for you if you do this every, every 90 days, religiously, okay? Last but not least, one of my favorite nuggets is the, da- the daily meeting. You need to have a daily meeting with your employees. How many of you are having daily meetings, Monday through Friday, religiously, and, you're, and you as the business owner are on them? One, two, three, okay. This will change your life. How many of you guys feel like some of your employees have been disconnected? Some of them are like, dude, I can't reach this guy. Like he's, or she, like hard to get a hold of, hard to do this, hard to do that. You, know, you guys know who the name is, write it down. Who's that employee that you're really trying to connect with? Where you're struggling to, and you can't. Having daily meetings are huge. And we do two things. So I use a platform called Cardone University. You can use Andy Elliott. You can use whatever you want. But your your team needs to be training on something every single day. Read a book together. We read a book. We do one chapter a week. We're doing Natalie Dawson. Ironically, we're doing Natalie Dawson's book, Teamwork. Right? We're on chapter like 11 or something like that. We do read one chapter a week as a team. My sales team, we read one chapter a day. Non-negotiable or you won't work here. You have to be working over and over and over every single day. Your team needs to be, see you doing it, okay? And you just have to make it a priority, plan and simple. A daily meeting will change your entire culture. How many of you guys have core values? Raise your hand, loud and proud. Higher? Don't be scared. Cool, 90% of the room. How many of you right now, don't freaking lie to me, how many of you right now I could call any one of your employees and they could recite verbatim every single core value? So 90% of the room raise their hand, only one raise their hand again. 
By the way, that happens in every single room. It's one of my favorite little things I do. Pardon my French. Why the fuck do we have core values, guys? Why do we have core values if we're not going to train on them and we're not going to learn on them and we're not going to use them? Take that cute canvas of core values and freaking throw it in the trash. Burn it. Go tape it to that dude's freaking white vans. It's not doing you any good anyways. Oh, then you check a box or it looks cool. Or the once a month when you have a staff meeting, you come in and they see it for 30 seconds. I'll leave you with this. Hire and fire based off of core values. No emotion in business. Write that down. That comes from Brandon Dawson. No emotion in business. The only emotion allowed in business is the emotion of celebration. No ego. No emotion. Unless we're celebrating shit. Plain and simple. Okay? You guys have to understand you hire and fire based off of core values. Those are your business commandments. Right? Hey, you're fired. Why? Matt's fired. Why? Because you want to give this core value, this core value, and this core value. Or, hey, you're messing up on this core value, this core value, and this core value. We need you to do better. I'm going to show you how to do better. Here's how I do better with all these core values because I eat, sleep, and drink these core values 24-7. You're going against one, four, and six. I need you to stop immediately. And in a week, we're going to come back and see how you're doing. 30 days, we're going to come back and see how you're doing. If you continue to forfeit these and go against these, you will no longer be here. Plain and simple. Was there any ego there? Well, I don't like him, or he's not very nice, or do this. No, 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 no. Here's how you hire and fire, guys. Plain and simple. Okay, you hire and fire based off of core values. No emotion. No emotion. You're like, well, how does that happen? Dude, imagine it. Two, two dudes, right? Big old testosterone. Like, being mad. We're like, hey, I'm mad at you, or you suck at this, and like, you're a pussy. Like, going at each other. Like, what, what's going to get a result? Absolutely nothing. But if you come in and say, hey, Matt, here's, here's where we're going. Here's what we want to do, right? How many of you guys have goals for 2024? Raise your hand. Raise them, raise them high. Hi, hi, hi. Awesome. Good job. How many of your employees know exactly what every single goal is for you guys for next year right now? And I could call them right now and they would tell me. Why the fuck do you have those goals? So one, one of you, Matt, how many employees do you have? I have Ballpark. I have a direct sales company. Okay. Uh, who, how many employees do you have? Uh, about 190. Yeah. How many of them? How many, uh, the point of it, guys, is how many of your employees or people that work with you or a contract with you know where you want to go? How about your spouse? Does your spouse know where he or she wants, where you want to go? Does he or she know where you want to go next year? So when it comes to invest in that program, invest in that conference, or invest in that mastermind, or invest in that product, or invest in that truck, or invest in that trailer, or invest in that marketing. If you haven't, if she doesn't even know the vision and know the goal, why the hell should she support you? You're a terrible communicator. This is where we want to go. This is how we're going to do it. This is what we need to invest in order to get there. Do you have, do I have your support to do that? I will not fail you. I will show up every day. I will make it happen. You need to be doing that for your spouse and your kids. And also for your team members, plain and simple. And even if you want to get like super deep, indirectly, all my suppliers know we did, we're going to do 12 million this year. Our goal next year is 15 million. Call any one of my 87 employees right now. By the way, half of them speak Spanish. Ask them in Spanish, what's the goal for 2024? Every single one of them will say 15 million. Every single one of them. My spouse knows it too. Okay? Make sure, make sure that you do these, do the PPFs. Okay? Three, three of each. Every 90 days, okay, make sure you have core values and you, we recite our core values every single day on our daily call. Every single day, 8.30, 9 a.m., try and get a hold of me between 8.30 and 9 a.m., I dare you. Try. I'll give you my cell phone. Try to, try to get a hold of me between 8.30 and 9. You'll never get a hold of me because we're having that daily call. And every single morning, we go and recite all of our core values, all of our employees. Plain and simple. Any questions? Questions? Okay. Yes, sir. How do you do that with subs? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Sims, get them in a room. Run out the room. Yo, dog. Hey, drywall guy, flooring guy, painter guy, whatever, roofer, get in here. Hey, this is where we want to go. This is how we're going to do it. And this is where you need to show up or I will not use you. Do I have your commitment? Yes or no? If you do, cool. Shake my hand and peace out. If not, later. Right? So 
I'll leave you guys on this. I have an event next Friday if you want to attend. It's literally what I just did for 30 minutes, but for eight hours. It's literally here. I live in Power Ranch for 10 years. It's at the clubhouse. You can hit me up later or follow me on social media at Jason the Roofer. You'll see it everywhere. At Jason the Roofer, it's 497 bucks. You guys know Green Mango? Heard of Green Mango Pest Control? They did $22 million this year. Pest control, right? Kevin Bodden, he's going to be speaking. You guys have heard of Coconut Cleaning? Blue Vans? He is also going to be speaking. His name is Evan Ritchie, right? Apart from my work comp insurance guy, myself, and my business partner, Nikki T. It's next Friday. It's 497 bucks. You want to come all day, right? And we're just going to do this for eight hours. We'll blow up your business, and we'll get you guys on fire, ready to rock and roll for 2024. Cool? cool. Appreciate you all. Thank you.